Today we're going to be talking about something that you will definitely be faced with as a director or a DP slash director combo because most of us are operating at a level where we're not only the cinematographers but also the director and a lot of people ask me this question quite a lot because they know that I've literally been acting my entire adult life. If you're new here you can just hop on over to IMDB type in my name Justin Phillip and you'll see that I've been acting in the film industry since 2010 but before that I was a stage actor so I did stage acting from 2002 all the way up into 2010 and then transitioned onto film and television. I have multiple degrees in theater and studied the Stanislavski technique, aka the method, over at the Moscow Art Theater School in Russia. So I've been around for a minute. And I've never done a video quite like this before, but my buddy Matt over on the Dog Times Patreon, he was asking me some questions about this and basically was just like, hey Justin, how do I talk to actors? And we started chatting back and forth and then I realized, Holy cow, I can do an entire video on this. Good to elaborate. And this is really important stuff because the last person you want to upset is your talent. Fuck sake, man, you're amateur. So with the time that I've spent acting professionally, which is well over 15 years, I can tell you guys quite honestly that no one can make your life harder on set than the actors. And the things that we're gonna be talking about today not only applies to commercial and narrative work, but also for any of my guys that are doing corporate talking head type things as well. Because the reality is any face in front of your lens, they need to be directed and they need to be treated as actors. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. I wanted to create this little checklist video to help steer any of you in the right direction if you're very new to working with actors. First time. <laughs> So here's the deal, I don't care what level you're operating at, whether you're at the bottom of the tier shooting student film kind of things, or if you're at the very, very tippy top shooting big, big Hollywood productions, at the end of the day, there's only two types of actors. There are the well-experienced seasoned actors, and then there are the less experienced, timid or shy actors. And lucky for us, if you just follow these few simple tips, you will have an awesome experience, not only with your actors, but your entire crew as well. Because here's the thing, all actors, I don't care what what they tell you, every single actor is super, super sensitive. They're hyper aware of their entire surroundings. They're like little detectives and they are delicate creatures. Now, obviously they're not all physically delicate, but definitely they are all emotionally delicate and they need to be handled with care because one wrong phrase and you could instantly find yourself in a cage with a bull and not even realize it. Because if there's one thing that actors are really good at, it's hiding how they really feel. And the last thing you want on set is the stress coming from your talent. I hope it was fucking good because it's useless now, isn't it? So here's the deal. If you're smart and experienced and you know what you're doing, you're gonna have an exceptional time. But if you don't know what you're doing, but yet you're just barreling through the day as if you know what's going on, mark my words, the actors hold that first domino that will fold your entire operation. This is pretty simple stuff. Some of it may even sound like a given, but the reality is nothing reveals an inexperienced director more than a long day on set. And if you've ever been on set, you know that every day is pretty much a long day. So the idea here is just to follow these tips, embrace them, learn how to utilize them. And if you are inexperienced, uh, the goal here is just to at least find a way to present yourself as if you're not inexperienced. Because let's face it, after all, it is show business, folks. Oh, shit. Number one, never give a line reading. And I know you're saying, oh yeah, obviously I know that, everyone knows that. But let me tell you something, madam and sir, mark my words, every single set I have ever been on since 2010, I have heard a line read being given. I need to clarify what I'm talking about when I'm saying line reading because it goes just beyond what I talk about in the video today. It goes beyond just someone walking up and saying, hey, say the line like this. I understand that's the very definition of a line reading, but my experience of what I've witnessed and experienced on higher end union sets, right? Bigger budget sets is a lot of times what happens is you will hear the crew repeating actors' lines as they're you know, passing one another or whatever the case may be. This is still considered a line reading in my opinion. You may not be saying it directly to the actor, but 
Again, I said the actors are little detectives, right? They're aware of everything. They're hearing people say their lines. Now take type A. They could be going, why are they repeating my lines? Or if it is a comedy, right? Because with higher experienced actors, they are performing for the crew, right? That's the only audience they have on the day. So if the crew is really into it, it's one thing if they laugh and clap, that's cool. But when the crew starts repeating certain lines, the actor is gonna get it in his head like, yeah, that line was solid. That's really driving it home. That, that made the joke land, whatever the case may be. But now months later when the project finally comes out, what if it doesn't hit the audience or impact the audience the same way that it impacted those crew members? So now that, that actor is gonna be sitting there going, well, what happened? You know, where, where'd I go wrong? And it could be, it could be an editing thing. It's just, it, it's just an audience thing, right? So it's, that is one of the main reasons why we shouldn't be saying lines on set, but also take type B. Now your insecure or inexperienced actor, they're gonna be hearing the crew members say those lines in the background, whether it's because it was funny or they thought it was the way that they said it, even if it's a drama. Sometimes you'll see crew members repeat the lines because the way the actors say it, they think it's funny. So it can come across as mocking. Or if it's an inexperienced actor in their head, they're going, is that what I sounded like? Oh, I shouldn't have delivered the line like that. You can see all the problems with this, right? So any of that stuff is highly toxic to your sets and you should shut it down. Here's one thing. If you're operating with a first AD, it's pretty simple. You just have them go over there and do it. It's fine if you don't have a first AD, but you need to politely and respectfully walk up to that crew member and say, hey, on this set, no one should be saying the actor's lines except for the actors. Okay, thank you, right? And yeah, you know, one of your like longtime crew members, they may look at you and kind of give you a dirty look or whatever the case may be, but who cares? They're going to find out real quick that this is not that type of set, right? Because everyone should be respecting each other across the board. And uh, those lines are that actor's property. So no one else should be saying them. That's literally, if you're still not getting this, think of it this way. It's literally the equivalent of you walking right up next to the DP and taking your little cell phone camera out of your pocket and standing right next to him and his camera and going, oh, that's a cool shot. I'm going to copy that and click you take a picture of it. Think of all the different ways that would impact different DPs, right? So it shouldn't be done with the actors either, right? So this is something that never is talked about, but it should be. Here's the crazy thing. It doesn't always come from the director. I've heard first ADs give line readings. I've heard the DP give a line reading. My biggest pet peeve, I've heard actors give other actors line readings. This is all so super toxic. I'm telling you right now, anytime someone gives an actor a line reading, it is pretty much the equivalent. That person might as well just walk onto set, pour gasoline everywhere and drop a lit match. I'm not even joking here, guys. A line reading is super, super toxic to your production. Ah! Ah! Let's take your type one actor, your super experienced actor. As soon as you give him or her a line reading, it's over, it's game over. You have instantly lost all respect from that actor. They may not let you know, you may not even be able to tell, but I can guarantee you they are instantly judging you and looking down on you. And basically what you've got now is that raging bull we were talking about. And nothing is worse than a silent raging bull. Now let's take type two, your shy, uh, inexperienced actor. Now. What happens here is, at least with type one, you can tame a raging bull to some extent, but this is not the case with type two. There is no return from giving a line reading to your actor type two. And let me explain to you why. So let's say you have an actress and let's say her name is Kim and you are so frustrated, you don't know what else to do. So you go, I gotta give her a line reading. So you walk up to Kim, you say, hey Kim, this time say the line like this. This is my house. Well, now, as soon as you do that and you walk away, now she's going, I'm sorry, I failed. Kim's not thinking about acting at all anymore. In fact, acting is the furthest thing from her brain. All she is consumed with now is how bad she is messing up. So what you have now, you have a crazy silent raging bowl in one corner of the set and someone completely coming undone in the other side of the set. And this is going to last for the rest of the shoot not just the rest of that shoot day, but the rest of the shoot. So good luck getting your Oscar performance out of that situation. Number two, this is the solution to the line reading. Rather than giving someone a line reading, 
communicate with one word action verbs. You're ready. You might not feel like it. You're ready. All right, so let's break this down. This is pretty simple stuff. And if you have to buy a thesaurus, then by all means, just buy a thesaurus. They even have apps on your phone where you can have a thesaurus on your phone, right? It's one word action verbs, folks. I'm talking about adverbs and adjectives, right? So here's a scenario. Let's say you're trying to communicate something to Kim. She's just not performing the way you want her to perform. So you go up to her, you say, hey, Kim, in this part of the script, try it more vindictive. It's one word, right? Or you say, Kim, uh, rather than being so reluctant here, I saw it more as invasive, right? That's it. Those two words, reluctant, invasive, these things you're now speaking actor, right? As soon as you walk away, Kim, she can grab her palette. She starts mixing up her paints. It's that simple. Okay, so let's take scenario B here. Let's say you go up to uh, your actor, Tom, and you say, hey, Tom, I saw your character being more threatened in this scene, you know, and threatened. That's your one word action verb. Now, if Tom is your timid, shy guy, he is just going to accept it and he'll take the note and run with it. But here's the cool thing. If he is more experienced, he'll say, really interesting, uh, because I saw him being more commanding here, right? Your experienced director will talk back to you with these one word action verbs. And now what that'll lead to is you'll go, oh, really? Why is that? And now that sparks a collaborative conversation. And what's cool about having a collaborative conversation with your actors is one, not only are you really directing now, uh, but also the rest of your cast and crew is going to take notice of this. And that instantly builds confidence in not only you as a leader, but also it builds their overall confidence in the entire project overall. Because nothing is more heartbreaking than having an entire cast and crew talk crap behind your back, right? Because everyone will know if you don't know what the hell you're doing and they'll all be saying that to each other and they'll all lose any confidence whatsoever in that project there is nothing more heartbreaking than that all of my dreams are fading last tip number three don't be a king kong director now this is i'm gonna share a personal story without revealing any details that would possibly get me blacklisted, but uh, this is from my big union stand-in days when I was standing in on a really large production television show. If you guys know anything about the way television shows work, they swap the directors in and out every couple episodes, right? And I've even seen sometimes the DPs get swapped out every now and then too, but mainly it's just the director. And this is a pretty interesting thing to sit and watch because you get to see how each director operates in the captain's chair. But also something that's interesting is you see how the cast and crew adapts to each new director. And one thing they do not adapt to is a King Kong director. And what I mean by this is a director that is really pretentious, really bossy, and really pushes his weight around. And actually this same type of director tends to play favorites. Hey sweetheart, you miss me? This is something that no crew will ever tolerate. Now, obviously this same type of person, I guess you call a diva, definitely also exists in the actor world. But here's the thing, crews have to kind of learn how to adapt and accept a King Kong actor, right? But one thing they will not adapt to and accept is a King Kong director, right? Because basically it is like the leader of their tribe uh, not being a leader, right? And nothing is worse than having your tribe sitting around waiting for you to slip up. Because what happens, what I've noticed in my experience is as soon as the cameras are rolling and that director's face is into the monitor over there in Video Village, that's when the sharks start coming out. And I've seen some crazy stuff happen. This may not apply to some of my lower budget guys, but on big union stuff, the crew is not worried about getting fired at all because they are protected by their union. So they have no problem of pissing you off, getting fired or leaving that job, walking out of that studio, walking two studios down, walking in there telling their friend what happened and they'll be on a new show the very next day. That's just the reality of the situation. It wasn't really my crowd. Well, let me share with you why I call it the King Kong director. The particular show that I was on, we had a huge King Kong director just really pushing his weight around, really bossy, really super pretentious, and basically nothing gets done. The entire crew just straight up works really, really slowly on purpose. And I remember one of the last days, uh, one of the crew members came up to me and he said, you see what's happening here? This director, he thinks he's King Kong. That's what he thinks is happening right now. 
And right now he is, it's okay, because he's protected by this studio. But as soon as the day wraps, he's gonna shrink down a little bit in size and not be able to push his weight around so easily. And certainly by the time he walks out the studio door, he's gonna shrink down a little smaller. And as he's walking from this studio to the parking lot, he's gonna continue to shrink down and shrink down and shrink down. And by the time he gets to his car, he's now almost back to being the size of a regular man. And when he gets in his car and pulls out there on that big freeway, by then he's no longer King Kong at all. He's now just a regular person like one of us. That wasn't word for word because this was years ago, but it just, it had a huge impact on me. And I just was like floored by this crazy analogy. Here this big burly crew member was sharing with me this, you know, so philosophical kind of story. And I guess what I'm trying to tell you guys is don't be King Kong. Remain the person in the car. Be one of us. Hey, if you're a fan of the channel and like to the support, there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first and easiest way is to just hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell so you get the latest videos as soon as they're dropped. But if you wanna go above and beyond that and be a part of a daily filmmaking conversation, then I invite you to join the Dog Times community over on Patreon. That is where once a week I release an exclusive members only video, breaking down projects, talking gear, and sharing real world experiences as a DIY indie filmmaker in Los Angeles. But my favorite part about the Patreon is the conversations happening over on Discord. That is where you will be connected with like-minded filmmakers and have instant access to learning ways to improve your own skills so you feel more confident about working on set as a professional. So welcome to the Dog Times community and I'll chat with you soon.